There's no way you can turn it off or firewall it. It has to, it has to be able to accept this data. Uh, I can send you an SMS to your phone and you don't have to do anything, right? So all the bugs that were in the earlier iPhone that I found were all like browser bugs. So you have to trick someone to go to a website or do some man in the middle or something. It's complicated, right? But it's easy to just send that text message. It's, it can be in, in your pocket and I can send you a text message and, uh, you know, your phone will process it. And so, you know, this was like great. It's like, oh, this is just like when I started computer security back in 1990 when, uh, you know, everyone's port 135 was open on the Internet. It was awesome. So uh, it's the same way, and that's why I like it. The other thing is uh, maybe I want to hack your computer, and I know your IP address, but I don't know, or, or I know your name, but I don't know your IP address, right? So, you know, I pick on you, right? You're in the front row, so I want to hack your computer. Well, I don't know your IP address, right? But I can probably find your phone number. I go, hey, who's that guy in the front row, man? He really looked like he had some questions. I want to follow up with him. Someone will give me his phone number so I could hack him that way, right? So phone number is actually easier from a targeting perspective. And the other thing is, uh, I say in the end, so they actually do have these SMS firewall things you can buy for your phone, but they work at a higher level, and you can attack the, the actual low-level SMS. So, so there's basically nothing they can do. Uh, you know, it's a great attack vector. And none of these things really are going to change much either. So uh, it's going to be a, a great, like, you know, the port 135 on Windows being open was great for a while, but then, you know, hey, people bought firewalls, and Windows firewall existed, and, you know, people bought routers to sit in front of their, their cable modems and stuff. So... Uh, but none of this stuff is really going to go away, at least for the, the near future. So it's still going to be a good attack vector. All right, so how does uh, this work on the device? There's actually two processors on your phone. One does what you, know, you would normally call the processor, so the web browsing and so forth. The other one's the modem, and that's the one that deals with, with the carrier. So the modem runs some specialized real-time operating system that I don't worry about. It's too, too low level for me. Um, but the, the important thing is the, the two... The two Processors talk to each other over these logical serial lines using GSM app commands. So uh, when, when I'm sitting here with my phone and, and an SMS comes, uh, what happens is uh, you get an app command uh, res result code. That's what shows up. And, and basically what it looks like is this. On the serial line between the two applications, you'll get these, these two lines. So it'll say uh, a result code and then a, a number, which is how much data to expect, and then this binary stuff which is called a PDU. And the great thing about giving talks about mobile and doing mobile work is, you know, everyone else is supposed to turn off their phone, but I can't turn off my phone because I have to use it for demos. So if my phone rings in the middle of a talk, like, you can't get mad at me. All right, so uh, what's this PDU thing I was talking about? I gave you an example in the last one. Let's break it out a little bit because if we're going to fuzz this thing, we need to understand the fields. So uh, just running through real quickly, this is uh, uh, what a PDU looks like. So this SMSC address is basically like your phone number. Um, you'll get a link, so 7, a type 91, that means international, like an international form of a phone number, and then the actual phone number encoded in some way. So uh, if, for those of you out there who like to look for bugs and do fuzzing, uh, it, it's very typical to see this uh, link type data. So uh, whenever you see that, it's like, hey, this is something I want to fuzz. So then you get, there's some other bytes that say like, hey, deliver means this is a, a text message coming down or an SMS message coming to the phone as opposed to like leaving the phone. Um, then you get another phone number, which is who sent the, phone, who sent the, um, the uh, message. And then you get some other fields that say things like, how is the data going to be encoded? Is it compressed? Is it 7-bit? Is it 8-bit? Uh, that sort of thing. Um, is, it, is it binary? Is it, is it not? Uh, and then you'll get the, the long thing, SCTS. That's a timestamp. Uh, which no one really pays attention to, I guess. And then you get UDL, which is a data, user data length, so A in this case, and then you get the actual data. So that's what, that's what a text message looks like. So uh, one of the reasons when I went into this, I said, hey, you know, I told some of my friends, hey, I'm going to look at SMS vulnerabilities, right? I'm going to try to find some bugs. I'm like, no, you're never going to find anything. SMS is so simple, right? There's, there's like no bugs. You know, I send text, right? It turns out, so you even getting this, you're like, well, maybe there could be some bugs, right? There's like some links and types and stuff, and uh, it gets worse. So uh, that last thing I showed you was like, hey, meet me at the mall. That's the, the simplest kind of message there is, but there's way more complicated ones. So uh, besides just sending text, you can also send data. Um, and, and there, instead of just sending t text in the UD field, so the user data field, you, can, you, you, you use what's called a user data header, UDH. So this is uh, an example of, of what user data header looks like. So these bytes would show up as, in the data of a regular SMS message. Um, and here I break it out again. So, you get a, a header length, so in this case five, and an IEI, which is an identifier, which is what, what kind of data this is. 
Um, in this case, it's zero, and I'll, uh, I'll talk, talk more about IEIs. Um, and then the data link, three, and then the actual data. So in this case, zero, 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 three, zero, one. Okay, so what, what does that stuff mean? So, so let's break that out and see what, what this means. So this is a, a concatenated message, concatenated uh, uh, 8-bit message. So um, concatenated messages, say I, I really want to talk a lot about going to the mall, right? So maybe I want to talk about going to the mall and what store and what time and whatever. So it's going to be more than 160 characters. So in that case, uh, the phone can send a message longer than 160. It just sends it in more than one message, and your phone will reassemble it for you on your end, sort of like TCP, right? So um, the way this works, that's an IDI of zero. Uh, means expect a concatenated message. And then there's three bytes of data. So a uh, reference number, which says like, you know, different messages would have different reference numbers. So in case maybe you're getting two concatenated messages at the same time, you can keep it straight. And then the total number of messages to expect, so maybe you're sending three, and in this case, one, so the first message. They count from one, not zero. It's like the only time in computers that, that they do that for some reason. Okay. Um, so what are some IEIs? These are the ones that the iPhone supports. I reverse engineered it. So uh, 00, we talked about. 01 is uh, voicemail. So when it, whenever you get a voicemail, like it's like ding, you know, on, on your iPhone if you have an iPhone. Uh, that's because you got a SMS message with an IEI of 1. Um, uh, applications can register port numbers just like in TCP, except here they are port numbers for SMS. And those IEIs are 5. And then the, the very special port number on iPhones is 5499, which is uh, visual voicemail. So visual voicemail sits on 5499. If it gets a message, it tries to process it. And this is what the kind of data that ends up to that port looks like, where I X'd out like, things that I thought AT&T could, could find me and, and ruin my account or something. But it turns out now me and AT&T are friends, so they wouldn't do that to me. But at the time when I wrote this slide, we weren't friends. All right, so uh, port 2948 is some, something called WAP push. Yeah, and then there's, there's this great program called PDU Spy, that same PDU I put in. It's just like a little Windows GUI that will, uh, will, will break out all the fields for you. The bad thing about PDU Spy is almost every, every um, fuzz test case that I have that causes a crash, I'm like, well, I'm going to put in PDU Spy, and it'll tell me what the difference is, right? It crashes PDU Spy, too. <laughs> Although PDU Spy actually handles it better. It, it like puts up a, like a dialogue. It doesn't actually crash. And it's like, oh, and it's in German. I can't read it. But, uh, you know, like iPhone would actually crash. Okay, so now I want to actually do some fuzzing. Um, okay, so I use Sully, which is, uh, so I need a way to, to generate test cases, uh, generate PDUs that have problems and send them into the iPhone or other device. I should say I don't actually mention it in this talk, but I did other things besides iPhone and my Black Hat talk. I did Android uh, and I did Windows Mobile, which you might care about. So, um, and the way that I work is, you know, I'm just doing this for fun, right? So uh, I would turn on my fuzzer. Uh, and as soon as it found something that looked good, I would turn off my fuzzer, right? Because that's all I wanted is a bug I can talk about in my talk. Um, so I found, I found this great iPhone bug I'm going to talk about later. I found an Android bug. Android's written in Java, though, or the SMS implementations in Java. So all I could do is, like, make an a exception occur, and it would crash the thing. But I couldn't take it over. And then uh, on Windows Mobile, I, uh, I had this HTC Dream phone or something. And, I, you know, we turn on the fuzzer. It was like test case one, two, three, four, five, six, up, oh, seven, killed it. So, uh, you know, it was like we had like hundreds of thousands of test cases to try, and number seven killed it. And it was really, really serious bug, too. But it turned out it wasn't in the Windows Mobile code. It was in uh, TouchFlow, which is the little GUI that they throw on top, the HTC, HTC throws on top of Windows. So um, your guys' code survived at least seven test cases, I can say that. <laughs> So uh, I'd be, I'll, I'll turn it on someday uh, when I'm bored and see if it can survive all 100,000. But you know, it, it did better than, than TouchFlow, which only sent seven. So, so this was a really bad bug. So it turns out it was a format string bug. So if you sent like a percent %n, it would, uh, it would kill the phone, right, in a very exploitable way. And what's worse is I, I, you know, my test case was gigantic, right? It was in some UDH field way down, you know, like crazy. So I, I kept simplifying it and simplifying it and simplifying it to see like where the actual bug was. And I finally got down to, oh. You can just send a percent n to your friend in your phone, and it'll crash their, their touch flow. <laughs> that was bad. And then, uh, to, you know, this is like props to you guys. So the, you know, the, the thing that was worse was it, it would store this message, right? 
So it would crash the, the, the GUI, and then it would have the message stored. And so when you start back up the GUI, like you would reboot or something, you'd be like, okay, let me show you that last text message. Oh, you know, <laughs> and that, that killed me again. So the only way you could fix it was to go into the SMS application that was built into Windows, and it could actually display the percent. And surprise, you guys, you know, fuzzed at least one test case. And uh, you would remove the, the, the SMS message there, and then you could start up the TouchFlow 